I'm going to say this, <laughs> that um, when you're truthful and honest with yourself, when you don't lie to yourself, um, <laughs> then um, you don't lie to the Creator or God, and then you don't lie to people when you talk to them. And um, when you walk like this, when you're truthful and honest with yourself, people will trust you because you have to earn trust. And this is how trust comes back. But yet, each individual has to make this change. Nobody could do it for you. Only you could do this because nobody could walk in your shoes but you. So it's up to this two-legged earth man, human being, to make a change. And when they put us under democracy and taxation, it's an IME system. Why in these big cities, people or neighbors don't even know their neighbor's name. That's how uh, it's an IME system. So, um, you know, uh, it's time for truth like this. And um, when these red nations here, everything was we and us. You always thought of somebody else. So by being under this system that they put us under, if you're going to think of others, think of our grandmother Earth, Unchimaka, that we walk on her every day. You know, time to defend her and like this. But again, each individual has to do this. Nobody could do it for you. So it's time for truth now and like this. It's time to heal our grandmother and like this. But it's up to us to do this. And then it's time to look at e each other at your hearts, not the color of your skin or like that. And so these kind of things I was told to remind the world when we started. So, like I said, this is the 253rd time. <laughs> 11 of them was in Europe. Uh, we went to Europe last summer. Eight of them in Norway. One in Cop uh, Stockholm, Sweden. Copenhagen, Denmark. And London, England. So, uh, they heard it over there. Part of it heard it over there. Uh, the same thing, what I'm telling you here. But um, we were told to do this with truth, no more assumptions and like that, that um, this book came out in 2016, almost three years now coming, almost three years now coming. So some of you might have read it or like that. Um, this is where we ask if you have any questions pertaining to the book or the family or anything like that, uh, now is the time to uh, ask and like this, and we'll answer. So um, in our culture, our language, our nation, when we say Wopila, it means the crazy horse family thanks you. And <coughs> so um, um, thank you this evening uh, <laughs> uh, for listening to the family and um, you guys all have a safe journey home, you know, and like this, you know, so, but it's time for <coughs> questions. So if you have any questions, it's time to ask. Yes? Are you afraid of, because we all know the U.S. government doesn't yeah. keep <laughs> treaties, are you afraid of this court, court case uh, that they might find a way? I mean, when this country declared war on a Lakota nation, under international laws, when two countries one declares war on the other one. All treaties, agreements, anything made between those two countries become null and void in a court of law. So, so when, we, when they declared a war on our people, everything that the government made, these treaties and like this, are no good. So we already won our case against the Harnell Brewing Company. And now it's our nation or anybody of these red nations that have been claiming my family and grandfather, now it's time to show your proof. And this is laws that this country made. 
And coming from a federal agency, as truth, we could say we're the most regulated people on this earth because we live by federal, state, tribal, county, and city laws that apply to us every day. So uh, when I said that in Oklahoma, um, this elder native man was sitting in the front. He raised his hand. He said, me, he said, I live by six laws because I also live by my old lady's law, too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm more regulated than you. you see? <laughs> yeah. And like that, you know. But in our culture, uh, humor is medicine, and when you laugh, there's no stress. <laughs> it's good medicine, you know, so, and like that. So, um, but um, these are laws that, that they taught us, put us under, we live by. If we break it, you're incarcerated. So these laws apply to them also, not just us. We're not separate and like this. So they're going to get tested, this government. Yes? Um, your grandfather's name, Crazy Horse, came from his yes. family. Why was he called Crazy Horse? OK, this is what the public didn't know. The name Crazy Horse is our family name, a family name that's in our family, oh. representing the name. The grandfather had it first. He was the first Crazy Horse, 1700 to 1825. The father carried it from 1825 to 1858. He was, a, he was the second Crazy Horse. What the world all knows is the warrior, 1858 to 1877, when he got assassinated. But under our traditional laws, um, when he got assassinated, he couldn't pass a name on. Because he just had a daughter that was two years old when, when she left for the other side. So when a Lakota can't pass his name on, under traditional law, the name comes back to the parents. 1877, just his father was here at that time, so he got his name back. So he handed it back into the family where today a grandson in our family carries the name. My, one of my younger brothers is Crazy Horse for the Crazy Horse family. So as truth, as long as the Crazy Horse's family is here, Crazy Horse is alive and well in our family. And it's what, we're not like Europeans where you use one name and you use it for hundreds and hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah, and uh, also we don't use greats in front of our grandfathers or grandsons or like this, our grandchildren. That's European. You're either a grandfather or a grandson or a grandmother or a granddaughter, like that. Yes? Do we know or can you say where the origin of, this, of the name? Of the By the grandfather. He was the first to carry it. I mean, so how, he, tradition, how he got the name is what you're asking? Right. Yes. His horse um, uh, was like how he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was fearless. In battle, he, he wanted to be the first one there and like this. And his horse was the same way. But his horse was like a big dog. It was protective, nobody could get close to him. He'll get in between him and like this, and nobody could ride him, only he can. And in battle, he'll jump off a cliff, he'll jump off a cliff. And like this, his horse was just like how he was, why he was named Crazy Horse. And that's how the name came. I mean, the original. Yes, that's the original name. How he got it. So, in our culture, there could be ten brothers and sisters. They could all have a different kid name, and also a different adult name. And this is what throws people off <laughs> because we're not European. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a linguistics question. Yeah. So I know that each tribe has a different language. Yes. And all that. So what my question is, 
when they had to trade, how would they communicate? Is, was there one national tribe language? Okay, um, when just the Red Nations were here, before anybody came to this continent, our universal language was hand talk. Oh, okay. okay that we all sense. talked with our hands. That makes total we motioned. So there could be all these different dialects, mm. but they all used this oh. as our universal oh. language of these Red Nations. No, no, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Yes. Uh, more than 50 years ago, when I was a boy, my family went camping out west from Ohio, and we visited Mount Rushmore, but we were all more drawn to Crazy Horse under construction. And, and you could see this is the arm, this is where the horse will be. There was a hole through just barely. Yeah. And I haven't been back since. And his face, his hair, his arm is getting more detailed. The head of the horse is starting to take shape mm -hmm. and like that. I mean, it's there. I mean, Mount Rushmore fits on my grandfather's cheek right here. <laughs> so, you, so you know how big that sculpture that's, is. That's the correct perspective. Yes, yes, and like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that lady back there asked. Oh, thank you. Yes. I, um, I was crazy horse ever considered uh, by the people um, to be a holy man? All our people were spiritual people, were a spiritual nation. So um, I, I don't know if we're out of those bookmarker things. A spiritual nation could never be defeated. So uh, this is what our nation of Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, were all spiritual people. So that stuff like that, Hollywood, you know, where there's a medicine man, there's a holy man, there's a, yeah, like this. That's not hard. It was just, for our nation, it was a way of living life. 24-7, 365 days a year. It wasn't a religion or anything. It was a way of living life. And this is how we walked on this earth, without the seven English words, and like that. You know, so um, everybody was like that. Yes. Earlier about Wounded Knee, um, about it being originally battle, but most of us in the history know that it was a massacre. I read somewhere that the uh, soldiers that were awarded medals, they're being taken back. That's what they're asking now. Mm -hmm. But under the United States history, they called it a battle. Yeah. You know, and then like Groton and Fetterman fights, which were battles, they called it a massacre. Because, yeah, yeah, because they were soldiers. They had guns, they had sabers, they had rifles, they had artillery, and they were trained to fight. And when they lost, they called it a massacre. And like this. So a lot of corrections for our nation is coming. And like this. Yes? Huh? Do you have the books here? Yes, up here. So when we're done, um, and we'll sign them when, you, when we're done. And like that. So, yes? We, we were at the Crazy Horse Monument. Yeah. And what, what we learned about, one of the things that we had heard is that not all, uh, that there's some um, uh, criticism of uh, <coughs> Native peoples to, to have this monument, the way, it's, the way it is. Um, can you comment about it? That's assumption. Oh, all the books written say he's no Glala. That's not what he is. They didn't know that Korzak met with our family because he was supposed to tell nobody. And then where our family was in hiding. So 2001, now we could tell the truth of why, how that mountain came to be and like this. Yeah, so I have a shirt like that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, crazy, there's no more. Yes? So it sounds like this is taking a very long time. How, how difficult is it for your family to keep going here? 
waiting for? I mean, my grandfather waited 124 years to tell who we are. So we have to learn how to wait, call patients. They were patients for 124 years. So uh, we just have to, but they can't stop truth. Truth is gonna come, come out no matter what. Yes? Um, what, what was the stress level like in your, for your family while you were in hiding? I mean, we'll laugh, because look what this guy's writing, what he's saying, and like this. When you know the truth, you know everything else is assumption. Let's see how wild they get with their stories and like this. So we weren't, uh, I mean, but to be able I mean, to listen to this stuff and, and then to walk away, where now, show me your proof what you're saying and like this when the real family stood up and like this so um, I mean it's yeah and this is where because uh, we were told to do this with truth that um, as truth a second ago is already in the past you can't turn time back because it already happened and this is where what we could control is now in the future is what we could control. So this two-legged earth man, human being, it, now it's time to, now in the future, think of that and like this. Because a second ago is already in the past and like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is where um, I would say that under democracy and taxation that they put our nation. If you think you own something, land or whatever, try not paying your taxes for one year. No. <laughs> They'll come and foreclose you and give to somebody that will pay these taxes. So as truth under democracy and taxation, you don't own nothing. <laughs> as truth. And like this. But I guess we only have 15 minutes left, so, um, uh, I guess that was the last question. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's time to um, um, get books uh, and sign. And uh, we also do sometimes, I mean, we're willing to take pictures and like this and stuff. So, um, but also um, this world, uh, when they talk, they sometimes ask us about DNA. So um, when, the Smithsonian uh, uh, returned some hair that was taken in 1890 from Sydney Bull um, when they returned it to his grandson. They took this hair to Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, to one of the leading DNA experts of the world. And when they did the DNA on that hair and did his grandson's DNA, it matched. That was his grandfather's hair. But this person that did the DNA he said, I did the DNA of this world. And the Asian, the African, and the Caucasians all came from Europe, their DNA. These red nations here, their DNA is unique because you can't find it anywhere in this world but where they're at today. So uh, when I heard my grandfather say, uh, we walked with the dinosaurs. They didn't lie to me. That's how long our people have been here and like this. But with the exception of two tribes, their DNA has some Asian DNA in it, and now with a Hopi and Apache. So they're the ones that came across the Bering Strait. And, and up there, uh, there's some, the same DNA of the Apache is up there in Alaska and like that. <coughs> but this is a, a leading expert one of the leading experts of the world of doing DNA. But uh, you do DNA when you don't know who you are. <laughs> but uh, when you know who you are and could prove it in, under the federal law and like this, you don't have to show your DNA because you know who you are and they know who you are. But when they don't know, that's when they do these uh, DNA and stuff. But I guess, uh, so, Thank you very much for listening to us. Um, 
Thank you for coming. You guys all have a safe journey home. Thank you. Thank you.